Uh, hallelujah, in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, I speak. I thank God that we have this opportunity for us to uh, share with one another about uh, cultivating a family altar. Yeah. Um, uh, of course, I do not know uh, who is in our audience, but uh, we shall do our best to share what we uh, uh, prepare. Okay. So, uh, to be honest, I think it is important uh, for you to also understand that uh, in my faith journey, um, I did not have a matured understanding about the family altar. Uh, so what it was like when I was growing up, uh, especially in my younger days in single digit figures, okay. Um, so uh, my auntie uh, bring us as cousins up and to have a family altar. So it's very simple, yeah. And so we uh, sing hymns, pray, read the Bible, right? And as we progress on in life, then um, we we then uh, have any some sharings, and that's after after we grow up. But then I realized that every family is different. Uh, not every family uh, took on the uh, uh, family altar seriously. Yeah. And so I realized that as I was growing up, not every family um, had this family altar. And it was only later on down uh, life's way that I myself have a, a family, right? And um, I can honestly say, even though, uh, even as a preacher, um, we did not actually have a family altar until later on. Yeah, I still remember once upon a time, uh, during uh, some kind of a seminar, uh, elder raised this up about the family altar. And so then I think, oh, okay, then I should uh, set up a family altar. Yeah. And so it's along the lines of, you know, family altars equated to a family service. So it's something that we should do. Um, obviously, it should be that our heart should have been more mature understanding what actually the family altar is. And it's only after you are involved in family altar and you grow in faith over the years, then you can see how important it is uh, for us to set up a family altar. Yeah. So that's the background from my point of view. So I'm not, um, so that I don't give you uh, an impression that I've been doing this all my life. And uh, I've had this perfect model all the time. No, it's not like that. It's a, it's a very, it's a very um, honest uh, encouragement that according to the scriptures, uh, family altar is something that we all should implement as early as, as possible, especially um, even before you get married with your own family. And then after you get married as a couple, and uh, also after, especially as soon as you have heard this message, you should set up a family altar for the sake of salvation. And that is the, a general thing of what I'm trying to help each other with, yeah? Okay, so basically a family altar is not like an activity you do for the sake of doing it, yeah? Um, I think um, I think if we have come to church for a while now, um, sometimes things can become a routine. You go there and then you pray, sing him, and then and you listen to a message and then you just go back home after you finish everything finished right and so sometimes even our worship becomes like a, almost an activity you do it and if you don't do it you feel guilty but the problem is that when we worship god like that um, it is not meaningful uh, it is becomes like there's no connection with god yeah so the family altar is not a activity uh, you do for the sake of doing it, okay? Basically, the family altar is when you have a basic beliefs in the truth of God and his will. And that is why we need to have a family altar. Yeah. 
formally alter is when we understand the basic beliefs and the truth of God and, and the understanding of his will, that the family altar is the place where we help each other to fulfill God's will. Yeah. To pray for one another, uh, to serve God together and to walk in his commandments. And that is what the family altar is for. Okay. So a family altar is the way of developing a family's uh, submission, a family submission to the king's savior through seeking his will to obey, to receive the promised immortality. Yeah. I mean, um, this is something that maybe some of us may not uh, have fully become aware of. Yeah. So let's turn to uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 13 to 16. Yeah. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 13 to 16. Uh, verse 13. I urge you in the sight of God who gives life to all things and before Christ Jesus who witnessed the good confession before Pontius Pilate that you keep his, this commandment without spot blameless unto our Lord Jesus Christ appearing, which he will manifest in his own time. He who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality dwelling in unapproachable light, and when no man has seen or can see, to whom be honor and everlasting power. Amen. Okay. So today, when we come to the family altar, we are coming to the King and our Savior. And so it is uh, through coming to the King, our Savior, we are developing our submission to God. Um, I think most of us can admit that there are some parts of our spiritual life we are not totally committed to God. Yeah. Um, so, so the family altar is to become more spiritual yeah, and to humble ourselves and to examine ourselves about God's will and to see whether there are things that we are doing or there are things that we are not doing uh, that uh, will put our salvation in danger. Yeah. Um, so that is uh, what we need to do. Yeah. And obviously uh, having the family altar is not just to avoid uh, being forsaken by God, but much more have the family altar is to discover uh, the God's will more and more so that we do it to strengthen our, our belief in the eternal life that God has prepared for us. Yeah. So it's not a negative thing in so much as it is a very positive thing. Yeah, so let's turn to Titus chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. Titus chapter 1, uh, verse 1 to 3. Paul, a born servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledgement of the truth, which accords with godliness. Verse 2. In hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie, promised before time began, verse 3, but has in due time promised his, uh, manifested his word through preaching, which was committed to me according to the commandment of God our Savior. Okay, so here it tells us that God long, long time ago promised about eternal life. Yeah, and He made a manifestation of His word, so that we can know not only what He promised us before time began. Yeah, but uh, He may manifest His word, His commandments, of which we need to keep in our daily life in order for us to be worthy to receive. Uh, eternal life. Okay, uh, so especially after we are married, we are responsible to take care of each other, right? Uh, physical uh, taking care of each other is part of marriage. But after marriage, if God willing, then we will have kids. Yeah, so that means that God, through us, give uh, us children. And so therefore, we also have this responsibility to look out for our children's, uh, not only the physical well-being, but their spiritual well-being. Uh, it's kind of a very daunting thought when you think about it, is that once we are born, we have a soul. Yeah? 
And uh, no matter whether we go to heaven or go to hell, this soul will never be destroyed. Yeah. And so that is why it's important that when we look at ourselves and our children, we realize that everyone has a soul. Everyone needs to be saved. That soul will exist, right? And therefore, we need to make sure that all of us can be saved by God's grace, according to God's mercy, okay? So those who really believe in the truth, believe that I have a soul, you have a soul, our children have a soul, our parents have a soul. So that is why we need to set up a family altar. Okay. And I think that's a good thing to, to start off with and seeking God's will uh, is important. Okay. So here it says that all who receive our God's promises to Abraham through Jesus Christ will set up a family altar so present and future generations may inherit the pattern of obedience to welcome Lord God to be the king in his kingdom from now on until forevermore. Amen. Okay, so basically what this means is, right, um, for myself personally, I have come to fully understand that we are Abraham's descendants through Jesus Christ. So whatever God promised Abraham is passed down to us through Jesus Christ. Yeah. And so, so, so we know that Abraham, he obeyed all of God's will. Yeah. And he believed God. He trusted God. And so righteousness was imparted to him. Yeah. So obviously Abraham, before he came to know God, he was a sinner, yeah. But then after he believed in God and God's word, then the Bible says that it was accounted to Abraham for righteousness, right? And it is through a God teaching Abraham about his will, his righteous will, that Abraham was to continue to receive the promises, not only for himself, but also for his descendants as well, yeah. Now, we know that whatever God promised to Abraham is true. Because why? Well, Abraham received Isaac, right? And that was a miraculous birth. But not only that, Abraham also had not only a son, Isaac, but also had descendants, not only Jacob and Esau, right? But through Jacob had also the 12 tribes of Israel and kings came through them. So all the promises of God um, has been fulfilled to Abraham, yeah, and through Abraham. So, so the ultimate blessing is uh, Jesus Christ. The ultimate blessing is Jesus Christ, right? So now today, since we are born of God through Jesus Christ, we are inheriting the same things as Abraham. So whatever God promised to Abraham through Jesus Christ, we are going to get the same thing, yeah? Uh, so let's turn to Hebrews chapter 6, verse 13 to 20. Hebrews chapter 6, um, verse uh, 13 to 20. Yeah. For when God made a promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely blessing I will bless you, and multiplying I will multiply you. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men indeed swear by the greater and an, and an oath for confirmation is for them an end of all dispute. Thus God, determining to show more abundantly to the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirming it, uh, confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have strong consolation um, who have fled uh, for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. 19. This hope we have an as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enters the presence behind the veil. Verse 20. Where the forerunner has entered for us, even Jesus, having become high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Yeah. So you can see here that, uh, that uh, God made a promise to Abraham. And then if we look at verse 17, that whoever receives the promise to Abraham and receives and become heirs of the promise, 
then God says that my purpose to save you will never change. Right? And so that means that God will fulfill his promise to Abraham and he will fulfill it to us as well. And this is the living hope that God has given to us. So that is why it's so important that we set up a family altar because God is so determined to save us all. Not only you as an individual, but your spouse and your children and your parents as well, etc. Yeah. So God is willing to save everyone. Right? So I think with this kind of um, uh, determination from God to save us, then that is why we should set up a family altar. Okay. So a family altar is where we uh, learn to become grounded, watchful, spiritually purposeful, and to live in the right direction. Yeah, uh, I think sometimes if we do not have a family altar, it's very easy to become busy and God's will becomes fuzzy. Yeah, sorry about the play of words, but it's, it's very true, isn't it? Especially when we live in London, right? You know, when you become busy, God's will becomes fuzzy. You know? And that is why we need to have this family altar. Because when we have the family altar, we allow the Lord Jesus to be our shepherd, to lead us as parents and also children to grow in obedience, to edify one another and see how God works in our family. Um, if you haven't actually set up a family altar before, uh, I hope that you can be encouraged by people who have set up a family altar, their testimonies. And, 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 and for me, you can take it from me, it's a, a very great blessing to have a family altar because not only will your own faith grow, but you can see that your children's faith will also develop as well. Yeah. And you can see that when you pray for each other and you pray for matters, that when, when our prayers are answered, uh, you can see truly that God is with the family. And there is nothing more precious than to know on a regular basis that God is watching over us and, and he is helping us and, and he is strengthening us. Yeah. So that is why I feel that uh, I believe setting up a family altar is important. Yeah. So how to set up a family altar? Well, first and foremost, my encouragement would be that couples need to pray over and agree that it ought to be done. Yeah. Um, I think um, if uh, both spouses are in Christ, it's easier to set up a family altar. But even if one spouse is not yet a believer, yeah, and of course uh, our church uh, strongly encouraged that we all marry in the Lord, yeah. Sometimes, as believers, uh, we have come into church ourselves first, and that is why we may have a non-believing husband or, or spouse or wife. Yeah, uh, But do not be discouraged, because I know of couples, uh, one is a believer and one is not a believer, but yet the one who is a believer, they have a steadfast relationship with God. They are so determined not only to... Uh, save themselves to save their children, but they have a determination to save their husbands as well, or wife. Yeah. So setting up a family altar, even uh, without our spouse's uh, agreement, or maybe they are not so uh, favorable, uh, it's okay. But it's worth it's worth getting there. Okay. Um, so a family altar. Is, is something to aim for if you have not done it so already. But if, 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 if as a couple, we are already, uh, both parties, are, we are all in the Lord, it is something that uh, if, we, if we set up, we will not regret it. Yeah. So it is good that uh, before we try to move the whole family, right, we move ourselves as a couple first, yeah, and says that, okay, uh, now we're going to start something new, yeah. And sometimes when we start something new, it takes up time, isn't it? And sometimes we may feel uh, we don't have enough time, right? Because then it impinges on other things that we want to do. Yeah, we have to sacrifice this, sacrifice that. But um, it is true. 
uh, sometimes we have a lack of time. But my encouragement is that as husband and wife, uh, you will know sooner or later that uh, maybe in the future you will suffer ill health for your children, suffer something that is beyond your ability to handle. Yeah. So it is better for us as a family, as for our faith, is that we set up a family altar because this becomes the foundation to build up our family. Yeah. Because one of the most humbling things as a parent is to realize that even as a man of the house, yeah, or, or the mother has the best of intentions, we all need God to help us. It doesn't matter how much experience, how strong you feel you can do your best for your family. You know, I tell you, you can never do your best alone. You can't. It's impossible. Without God's blessing, your 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 ability to help your family is very, very limited. Yeah. So setting up a family altar as a married couple becomes a security for your spouse and for yourself and for your children. Yeah. It becomes your source of true security. Okay. So sometimes a family altar can indeed affect the couple's altar, uh, can become stronger. So what do I mean by this? Sometimes when you set up the family altar, yeah, uh, it is your children that also strengthen your faith. Uh, it is not just like you set up a family altar for the sake of your children. No. Setting up a family altar can also be the source where God also strengthen yourself as a couple, as a parents, through your children. It's very true. Yeah. So as long as there is a desire in someone's heart, as long as we have the heart, you know, to let God do his work in our family, yeah, that is a true sign that God is working. Yeah. So I hope that uh, you can see that uh, to be the case. That will become an encouragement. So when you have the heart to set up the family altar, you need to interpret that as God starting his work in your family. Yeah. So don't give up. Okay. So setting up a family altar for different age groups. Yeah. Sometimes your kids are still tiny. Why start a, a family altar? It's too much trouble. They don't even understand. Yeah. But we know that when we set up a family altar, even though our kids are still tiny, actually by experience, it's really for our sake first, rather than for our children. Yeah. If you think about it, if you start laying down the foundations of the family altar, then your kids, even though they are tiny, they are grow up in the environment where worshiping God is the way of life rather than something that is uh, pushed and forced into the family, yeah? Okay, so sometimes uh, we find it that some people decide to set up a family altar when the children are different age groups, yeah? Different age groups, and sometimes it poses challenges because uh, children have their own uh, way of thinking and, and they don't want to because they can't see the meaning behind it, right? And sometimes uh, kids are in their early teens, uh, right? Uh, maybe it's even sometimes our kids are no longer kids, right? But today, there is no too late to set up a family altar. There's no too late. Because setting a family altar now ensures that we are seeking after God. Yeah. So I hope that uh, when we set up a family altar for different age groups, we need to realize, yes, it's not easy. Yeah. But because of what we have talked about just now, it is really worth uh, maintaining this course uh, to set up a family altar. Okay. So the thing is this, that depending on age group of children, the length of the fam the, 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 the length of time to spend on the family altar can be made simple. Uh, but the main thing is that it needs to be sincere before God. Yeah. So especially when our children may be young, it is really is not so much for them, it is for us all. That's the point I want to raise. 
uh, and the whole mentality is not just to do it for the sake of doing it, but inviting God to lead us. Okay, so one of the things that I've heard uh, about um, ch uh, parents uh, bringing children to church or teaching children to pray. So they find it quite difficult <coughs> to get their children to pray properly. Yeah because children cannot sit still right so they, they'll pray there follow you when you say something as a, in the name of jesus christ we pray and then they follow you and say right okay but then after a while you then you go into your own prayer isn't it right and then if you have the holy spirit you pray in tongues you have a more personal prayer with god right and then your children start to mess about right i think uh, of course we need to teach our children we need to teach our children uh, to, to behave themselves. But I think it is important to realize that children can only maintain a certain kind of focus for a certain period of time. Yeah? So maybe uh, for young children, you say, okay, we have uh, had this family altar. Now it's time to pray. After talking about the story, after saying uh, one teaching and something that they can apply in their life. So... Uh, how to love one another, how to share uh, testimonies you can incorporate in the family altar. Okay, so they have already concentrated for a while, right? So uh, as kids, there'll be kids, they'll feel restless. So if you do it for too long, they may not be able to endure, right? So my encouragement is that, yes, we will fit the amount of time according to the age group, but also... Uh, we need to understand that family altar, once you set it up, then it's a constant instilling of the teaching. So it's not just like once that lesson is taught, that is the only time you talk about it. So you try to cram in uh, the whole thing uh, during one session. No, it's not like that. So family altar is set up so that throughout the week, throughout the, the months, uh, throughout the years, uh, it is an instilling of God's teachings, yeah. And, 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 and the, 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 as they are growing up, then we are encouraging them from different aspects of life, yeah. So that is how to set up a uh, family altar. So it is not just like you uh, telling them, also invite them to share how they think as well, yeah. So the family altar, it really depends upon the age group of the children. Yeah, but it is something that is uh, quite enjoyable because you will discover that there are many things that the way they look at, uh, it will shock you to realize that maybe their insight into their faith is actually deeper than you thought. Yeah, it's quite encouraging when you uh, listen to our children's feedback or contribution during the family altar. Okay. So one thing about uh, setting up a family altar, it, you can start it maybe quite easily, but it's not easy to pursue. Yeah. Why? Because just like the Israelites, when they uh, left Egypt, it was easy to leave Egypt, but to have the heart to pursue, to go to the promised land, it was not easy. Why? Because as long as, as they were walking through the wilderness, they encountered difficulties, they need to fight battles. So in their heart, they find it, um, uh, they don't want to go on this way because they cannot see the promised land. They are not enthusiastic about it. So when you're setting up the family altar, it is natural to find that people's heart is not always going to be in it. So it's almost like you feel you are trying to push a rock uphill, right? And, and that is why sometimes we ourselves may feel a little bit lackluster to, to really pursue, to set up a family altar. And so therefore, uh, you will feel a greater a power pulling you somewhere else. And that is the thing. Especially when your heart is not completely in it. Yeah. I'll tell you this, when you feel this struggle is actually a good thing because it forces you to become even more motivated by faith and says, God, you need to help me. God, please help us, help us as a couple, as parents set up this family altar. 
Yeah, let us see you manifest your power and presence in our family because we know setting up a family altar is your your will. Yeah. So when you have this kind of commitment, you have something for aim for. And it's really quite exciting when you pray about something that you don't have yet. And then when you pray about it and you keep praying about it and not willing to let go until it's been set up properly, it's almost like building the tabernacle piecing all the pieces together and setting up bit by bit by bit and then until you see the whole tabernacle set up like this and then say ah then you can see the glory of god descend and that once you see the tabernacle or the altar the family altar set up you know it is god work it is god's work because you know the journey how hard it took to set it up how hard it was to maintain it yeah and so when you actually keep going, keep going, yeah, and you keep pursuing, you know that in itself is an encouragement because with the help of God, something spiritual has been set up in your midst. And that is a very good encouragement. Okay, So, so it's important that uh, when we set up a family altar, you overcome each challenge step by step. Yeah? And we all know, I mean, because all of us has been uh, been a teenage before, isn't it? Yeah. And so we go through that stage of wobbling in our faith. Yeah. So when you set up the family altar, it's really for ourselves to uh, strengthen each other, our partnership, right? As a couple in our faith in God to help grow our family members' faith as well as our own. Yeah. It's a challenge, yeah, because sometimes you may have tough days or tough periods of time at work. Things have been affecting your life and, and, you know, so every step of the way, there are different challenges. Sometimes your children maybe not been doing so very well in school or whatever, right? They have a falling out with their friends and they are discouraging, yeah. So every step there are is challenges, right? But it is because there are challenges, all the more we need God, all the more we need the, the family altar. Because it is through different situation, we learn to rely on God to overcome all things. Yeah. So let's turn to Matthew chapter 20. Matthew chapter 20, let's look at verse uh, 28. Yeah. Matthew chapter 20. Um, verse uh, 28 uh, verse 28 yeah just as the son of man uh, did not come to be served but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many yeah. now why do i take this verse uh, because here it talks about the son of man who is jesus isn't it yeah uh, it's something that we never thought about it like this you know did you know that when you are gathered in the name of Jesus, Jesus is in our midst, isn't it? Yeah, that is what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, right? But if you look at uh, Matthew chapter 20, verse 28, uh, you see Jesus, he came to serve, right? He came to serve. So basically, when we are gathered in the name of Jesus, we are basically letting Jesus continue to help us in our salvation. He is here to help us. That is, that is one thing that we need to remember. He is here to help all of us. He is here to strengthen your faith, help you. You're not supposed to do it all by yourself. You're not supposed to be uh, looking after the spirituality of your spouse, yourself, by yourself. You're not supposed to be are looking after the spirituality of your children by yourself. No, that is why we need Jesus, because Jesus is the one who has come to serve. And he has come to give his life, to give his life as a ransom for many, which includes us, you see. Yeah. So this means that uh, when we set up a family altar, we need to have a proper understanding about who Jesus is. Jesus he is the king he is our savior yeah that means he has his righteousness his will which we need to conform conform to yeah but 
also do not forget he is our saviour, he is our helper, you see. We need him for every single thing. We are not supposed to fulfill all of God's will relying on ourselves. We are fulfill God's will by relying on him to help us so that we can help each other and to help our whole family, right? Yeah. So, so, so that is why it's important for us to set up a family altar. Because the family altar is the situation that we place ourselves humbly before God and ask Him to strengthen us. Strengthen us first as a couple and then strengthen the team, which is our whole family members. Yeah. The coach and the captain, right? And then the team. Yeah. And that is how God is helping us. Right? That is how God is helping us. So let's turn to uh, one last verse, which I don't have on the PowerPoint. Let's turn to Hebrews. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews <clears throat> chapter 2. Yeah. Let's look at verse... Uh, 10 and 11. Yeah, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10. For it was fitting for him, for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons to glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. Verse 11. For both he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified are all of one, for which reason he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Yeah. So the, the point I am trying to make here is that Jesus himself, he is having the function to bring many of us to glory, including our children, or our spouse. And so he is the captain of our salvation, right? and he has been made perfect through suffering. So this means there is no weakness that he does not understand. Our Lord Jesus understands every aspect of human weakness. And that is why he brings us into the same place. We are all of one, right? So if you are a husband, if you are a wife, your 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 father or mother or child, it doesn't matter. We all bring our weaknesses. We all bring our difficulties to God together. We share with one another so that we are able to seek God to help us. Right, And so one of the points that I want to transfer on to yourselves is that sometimes we are not too honest about our own uh, weaknesses. Why? Because we are ashamed of our own weaknesses. But more often than not, when we are honest with our family, our family will not judge us because the chances are our family also no, they themselves have weaknesses too. So, so when we come together as a family altar, yeah, gather around the family altar, we will realize that God is not ashamed to call us brethren, you see? Yeah. So when we realize that God is not ashamed to call us brethren, he, he treats us as a family, right? He treats us as a family. And he accepts us, even our weaknesses as well. And so that is why he brings us together to be strengthened, to be made holy. Yeah. So setting up a family altar in that kind of uh, honesty is very spiritually healthy. Mentally, is very healthy. That means you don't have to pretend, right? And you're a bit more balanced. Uh, and you, there's, there's no need to let pride, um, you know, and make things a little bit weird, you know. Yeah. And, and when we are honest and open, knowing that God is not going to be ashamed of any of us, then who are we to be ashamed of each other? It doesn't make sense because we ourselves have our weaknesses. So therefore, we bring compassion into the family altar and say, you know what? I also have weaknesses. You have weaknesses too? Ah, it's okay. I have weaknesses too. That is why we come round the family altar. You see, the family altar is the place where we establish strength and confidence in God. And that we know for sure, 
We don't need to live under the gaze and judgment of the public or other people. We don't. Because the most important is that God is going to help us. He is not ashamed of us. As long as we open our hearts to each other and to pray for one another, knowing that God is a God who is not ashamed to call us brethren, there, there's nothing, nothing for us to be worried about. So I think um, to, to help us grow, I think family altar is a very healthy way to, uh, to build up a, a sound family, a sound family. Uh, to know that the most important is that our Lord, God and Saviour, He accepts us and He is for us all the way to eternity. All the way. There is always, everything is possible with God. Yeah. And uh, when parents uh, do this, uh, they, they transfer uh, the faith uh, from themselves that God gave to them to give to their children. It's a very invaluable, uh, not only experience, but it sets, up, sets them up for the rest of their life. Yeah, it's important because uh, family altar is where we learn to learn about God's love. And when we learn about God's love, we learn to love each other even in, in a better way. We learn to cultivate a heart of compassion, um, a heart of forgiveness, um, yeah, we learn to know that God is working in our family. So uh, this is what I want to share uh, to, 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 to talk about um, uh, cultivating a family altar. Yeah, and I hope that uh, with the shortness of time that we have, I've got the rest of the verses that I've left on the PowerPoint. So hopefully that will help us uh, reflect and motivate us to set up a family altar. And that even though we may find it that there are challenges uh, along the way of setting with family altar, it is worth enduring and praying about. And so that when it's eventually set up, um, having gone through the wilderness of setting up, uh, once we get on our way on our journey, we will see that God is supplying everything that we need to set up the family altar. Now, once the family altar is set up, then the source of everything, of all the blessings, is very clear. So may the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob continue to bless us. So let us uh, take a break and rest for 10 minutes. Let's have a silent prayer. Amen. <clears throat> 